welcome back to Ocean Beauty. In this video, we're going to be talking about the cause of code switching. And I'm going to be reading my scripts for my handy dandy laptop. So, code switching, what is it? Code switching is the process of shifting from one linguistic code, a language or dialect, to another, depending on the social context or conversational setting. Let's show some examples, right? So, I'm going to insert a video of Obama cold switching. I feel like this can be really relatable for a lot of the black youth or maybe just the black community in general. <laughs> Heck yeah, bro. Hey, Kyle, throw me a brisky. Right oh, hey, one second, guys. Hey, what's up, Jamal? Is he black? I don't... He might be. Holy shit. Come on, guys. It, it's me. I, Kyle, Kyle, where's the brewski? So, um, I don't think I ever told you guys what college I'm in, but I am at a PWI. I feel like in order to survive at a PWI when you come from a majority black area, it's you have to cold switch. I feel like you really have to cold switch to, I don't know. I feel like sometimes it's done to make other people feel comfortable or to not be seen in a specific type of way. But I also feel like it causes an identity crisis and a burnout. Research suggests that cold switching often occurs in spaces where negative stereotypes of black people run counter to what is considered appropriate behaviors and norms for a specific environment. For example, research conducted in schools suggests that black students selectively code switch between standard English in the classroom and African American vernacular English AAVE with their peers, which elevate their social standing with each intended audience. That has been my whole life in undergrad <laughs> for these past almost four years switching in between the two like in class at work presentations it's just it's really exhausting and then sometimes i would be scared like crap like am i going to slip up like even in the workplace probably every job that i've had for sure even before this job like my first job i used to cold squid so badly it would just be so exhausting because i would see how people that are themselves, like they don't cold switch anywhere they go. And I would see how they would be talked about behind their backs by other employees or how they're viewed. And they will often get mocked by other employees and put into these negative stereotypes based off of how they talk. And I also wrote, I think it's so funny how cold switching is the thing we have to do, but if someone else takes like AAVE and uses it, it's like cute or quirky or something and then they could probably make a video with it and go viral. Like for example, um, the period, ah, period, uh, girl or whatever. I'm gonna just insert a video just in case I haven't seen it. Ah, period, uh, period, ah. But yeah, she went viral for that. And it's so funny because I feel like that's like a one way ticket for a lot of people. Like basically you can just become a caricature of us and then boom, your life is set, your bank account is set. So I pulled up some research about how cold switching can actually benefit you. It's sad that it's benefits, like you have to do this to fit in a certain settings. But number one, for black people and other racial minorities, downplaying membership in a stigmatized racial group helps increase perceptions of professionalism and the likelihood of being hired. Yes, I feel like that has been me in any situation where I want to get hired for a job, an interview or something, or an internship, this has definitely been me for sure. Number two, avoiding negative stereotypes associated with black racial identity, for example, incompetence, laziness, and um, it helps black employees to be seen as leaders. Yeah, I feel like I've definitely used that to my benefit and I've used code switching a lot to my benefit to get more hours, get treated better in the workplace, um, be viewed in a different light. But in the back of my head, it's just like, dang, like you have to do all of this. You can't just show up as yourself because just being unapod unapologetically black and using like 
I don't know what they say, either Ebonics or AAVE, African American Vernacular English is seen as so bad, but if other people do it, it's working with you. And three, expressing shared interests with members of dominant groups promotes similarity with powerful organizational members, which raises the chance of promotions because individuals tend to affiliate with people they perceive as similar. So true. So true. I feel like even in classrooms, like where I'm with the only black person, I can read the room and know exactly how to code switch and use it to my benefit like the first day of class. It's like that. And now we're going to go over the cons of code switching. And of course, there's so many cons of code switching. Oh, I don't know if you guys ever seen the show called Big Mouth, but I remember this one example um, episode of where I forgot the character's name. I'm actually just going to put in a snippet of the video. Tie the don't give it. If that's the fucking RA, I'm about to. Oh, hey, Nadia. Hey, are we still going to Pinkberry later? You bet your bottom dollar we are. Yes, queen. Okay, go on. Okay, bust down. Don't you say a word, okay? It is different. Why? Because you're code switching for <laughs> And I also found this other article from Very Well Mind. Um, I'll link all of the definitions and websites that I'm using in the information bar or whatever. But it also ties into the term called double consciousness. And I'm just learning this for the first time myself. It says double consciousness is a term, term that was created with black folks in mind, though it can apply to people of color in general. What does this mean? It refers to how black folks look at themselves through the lens of the dominant society, meaning that there is a consciousness of their black identity and a consciousness of how the dominant culture sees them. This concept can lead to a feeling of being split and that it is unsafe to be one's full self in the dominant society. Yeah, I feel like that's so true. Like you don't know where it's safe to just be you at. And then after a while, you might completely lose you and go into an identity crisis because you're like, where did I even go? And now we can talk about ways in which like universities, like such as this one that I go to, or the workplace or just any places in general like social settings and stuff um what they can do to change stuff to make it a safer environment for people to not have to deal with this stuff so up here it says we can create laws and policies that take the needs of marginalized groups into account laws and policies that hold the interests of those with marginalized identities at the forefront are essential to making our society as a whole less oppressive um, inclusive workplaces. Inclusivity is the key, really. Um, those who have power in organizations must explore the ways they can make the workplace a safer environment. Explain that when employees use a language that is more racially aware and are aligned with action, people of color may feel safer about sharing and discussing their experiences. And then it also says that Code switching can be isolating and emotionally draining. Like I've done it for so long, it is so emotionally draining to the point where I, it physically hurts. <laughs> it actually physically hurts. Not even when it just comes like to our way of speech, like to our hair, to our clothes, just, just an attack to our identity as a whole. This actually makes me want to make another video on what is professional or what is professionalism? Like what actually is it? Um, where did these standards come from and how it's really not the definition of professionalism that we go by isn't really inclusive to everyone. And it's like, it's trying to fit all of us in one box and to abide by white standards. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please share your experiences down below if you've ever been in a situation like that. Bye.